on stage. Here's the bird man called. <laughs> Who's leading this? Rufus is leading this. Okay. And Tom. Tom, get up there. Defend this. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, cool. We've got these little tomatoes to throw if we don't like stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that case, don't stand close to me. <laughs> Tom, get over there by Rufus so I can get, get you in the front. Right, Friday. So what are we doing tonight? Talk loud, Rufus. Tonight we have. That's what we're scared. We have. It's not on here. Who is it? So what do you get? Corey Maynard. We have Leos is doing MacArthur's. He started at two thirty. Yeah, we got two thirty MacArthur's. Got, What's Corey Mann? Uh, Corey Mann is a nurse phone guy, 7 o'clock. But how many people have to do that? Two. Who? Me and Cecil. Okay, where's Cecil? Right, right here in front of you. Okay. Then I got signals right out there. Okay. 7.30 when we came in. So, who, so is Travis being represented by you? Travis will be here. Oh, he is coming? Yeah. <laughs> okay. He will to take himself today. Okay. Tom, okay. Tom. Tom. Boom, got rescheduled. Well, I just rescheduled it. I just talked to her. So. And he forgot to say we're doing Bush Stadium. See, she's Chinese. She don't even want to She knows Chinese. <laughs> Chinese, <laughs> Chinese, <laughs> Chinese, <laughs> Chinese, <laughs> Chinese <laughs> soccer <laughs> monkey. I got a, I got a problem uh, with uh, Bush Stadium. Uh, you know, guys, uh, I have no strength. I can't uh, I can't do that walking. Oh, you're not going. Okay. No, we don't. I got Bush Stadium up there. I was going to present that. Yeah, I, I know. It's it's beyond. I can't do it either. So we'll do the control. Um, you just want to do the walk. I'll walk through. We'll we'll see what we need on on Friday. Is Bush Day the only thing? Bush Day is the only thing. Saturday. Only thing Friday. Saturday. What about Sunday? Sunday. Uh, it's. There's only two other jobs with Bush Stadium. We went late that night. Um, and then Orient Walk is where we Okay, so oh. Paul Ifflin, explain the plan we came up with today for Bush Stadium. Perfect English. There are five levels there. The top level has the fans. We're thinking those are independent of levels three, two, one, and ground. Is that correct? No. So if we clean the fans, we ruin levels three and two. No, and no, four. you don't. You don't spread out. You can't spread out. Right. So my question is: Is it okay that we don't do the fans Friday, Saturday, Sunday? If we could do, go ahead and look up there, Everett. What we got? Can we do levels three, two, one, ground without messing up with the fans? Yeah, but when are you going to do the fans? Sunday. We may not do them, or we may do it Monday or Tuesday. We've got to be very clear from Bush Stadium what they're doing with us. One fan in particular, you can look up there when it's three times, and you can see that. That one needs to be at least four of these three. Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, one big fan. Brett, I don't know about one, one, if you do the fan. And I'm fine with fans being done. I'm saying Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I don't think we need to do the Red, fans. Redwood Club. That one Please, lay us. Can we do the fans Monday or Tuesday? We Monday. have how long till till we do the walkthrough with them? I'd like to do the walkthrough Tuesday afternoon. Well, we're doing we're doing Edward Jones on Monday. We're doing Edward Jones Monday and Tuesday. Okay, so if I walk through on Tuesday, if the fans are done Monday, right? A couple people. On the fans on, on Monday. <coughs> What's that mean? Not even on the schedule. I understand, but we're we're talking this thing through. Okay. Um, the walkthrough would be with me, a maintenance guy, something like that. It may take either Laos or Rufus or somebody with me, because as we find a punch, it may be that you go with me. We are going to inspect it my way. I'm going to do cameras and that. We're going to do. The pay plan is going to be that these are counted as a three job, a two job, and a one job. The total number of jobs are going to be added up, divided into the total bill. We're going to pay a per, per kitchen clean. You can either work independent 
and control the thing, or if you think you've got a buddy, you can take your chances with a buddy. Like if somebody's better draping and spraying, however you want to do it. But this is what we want to sign on today. You will be assigned that. It doesn't matter if you've been here a year or ten years. Whatever you sign up for, that is yours. You sign and you say, this is the stand and that's your thing. When I come to see it, I will be checking every single one of these. I will be assessing whether you get a regular pay or a bonus pay or whether you're in trouble. If there's anything shameful on there, uh, I kind of like, wow, this, this is a training thing. All of the potential profit for this will be paid to you. The company is not going to take any money off of this. This is a training for you to show me what you can do. In the past, we've had managers, Everett, Dane, Mike, they've gotten a chunk of money. All that money I will give back in the form of bonuses for good work. The lunches are not going to be provided by you there. You will pack a lunch here. You will say today what you want us to go get. Protein, candy, anything. You want stuff that's not going to put you to sleep. In the past, people have come, they have a meal, oh, I drove off. Past people smoke, they call it, they throw around. I don't know who did what. Your name or pair will be on as many of those as you can agree to. Clear? You will be awarded the cash bonuses for excellent work. Every defect I find, I will register. One person, layoff, she will be there, will record it. I'll say, you know, uh, Legrand, here's what you missed here in the corner. Let me show you. Here's the thing. You see? This is grease. You're supposed to clean grease. And I'll be really loving. Well, this they, is why you're not getting the bonus, Legrand. So I will state they, that. They won't have time to fix it prior to your... No, sir. They are going to do the job. They're going to check their own work. Because when I have these talks with people, the 28, 29, 30, 34, I'm going to remember this. As many people that want to show me they can step up and do it, praise God. I want to see who's noticed. If somebody's only been here a couple of years, somebody's been here, show me. Show me what you can do. If you're 8, 9, 10 years old and you can't do it, just admit it. I'm tired. I can't do this crap. Just, just be honest. But everyone's treated the same. It's called the American way. There is no management thing on this thing. The management thing will be divided into a bonus pool. And now, fairly, our guess is that the three ones there, the two ones, the one, we're going to try to make it fair. But you'll know all oh, this thing's hardly used. But they've been kicking ass schedule down. All this stuff's getting used. You know, oh, this is popcorn. This is proper. So, oh, let's trick them. I get it. But, you know, people that have pre-knowledge, okay, I get it. I can also be persuaded that we made a mistake in the first assessment. You know, that what we put was a regular, really should be up, and I will adjust it. I'm going to turn into a pretzel to be fair. But I'm not going to get any money out of this. We're going to fund the money back to you because this is a training site. It's a pure training site. Put up or shut up is the, is the training site. If you can do this, show me. No excuses. You got diarrhea. You're fighting with your girlfriend. Whatever. Put it down. You're going to be paid. If, if you know what you're doing, you should be able to make much better than the hourly wage you've had before. Because when you do it well, that bang. So, LeBron, people check their own work. The typical thing I check instantly, I come in with a piece of, of tissue, I go like this. It's a common thing. If that's dirty, flunk. I look in the trough, I pull a thing, I put a couple spots. If I can feel anything in there that's dirty, flunk. You've got the, the little thing that comes down into the two hickey. I take this, I do all this with toilet paper cleaner. Stick that, coats up, it's going to come back and clean. Should be done. That's, that's just the basic, that's hood hose stuff. That's 20 years ago cleaning. That's all it is. Now, God forbid the filters look filthy or there's dripping stuff, or there's gloves, or there's shims and crap that make, make it go, hey, customer, hey, hey, we've been here today, hey. You see, we're the hood hose. That's how we used to be. We're not that way anymore, right? 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 right. So if you've been learning crappy, shitty work, get out of here. Show me what you can do. Every job's going to be inspected. How? Like that U-Haul it was. 
Last week that U-Haul it, it's perfect, right? U-Haul it. You took a brand new thing out and you treated it like a U-Haul it. It was nice. You took care of it, right? It was no smoke. Day. Day. No smoke. No doing one thing, pretending another, saying it's over and fool. Those days are behind us, right? Those that want to do this, we're going to do it. Those that can't, just go. Get out of here. So that's the deal on Bush Stadium. This is a training site. This is our stadium. We're proud of it, right? You've been here two years. Show me that you, you've learned something in two years. Show me what you've done. If you haven't, that's a learning opportunity. And you sit there and go, I've never had anybody show me how to do it. We're going to show you how to do it. Right. But you're going to get crap paid for this because we're going to be paying Mr. Big Boy here or layoffs or something to clean up your doo doo. Because you do do. You didn't do what we wanted you to do. So this is what we're going to do. Okay? This is masturbation. We must do, we must do Bush Stadium with pride. I intend to check every single stadium myself. I'm going into Bush Stadium with people and say what's been going on here is stopped. We're not screwing around with it anymore. We're not cutting any corners. We're not pretending to do stuff and just sneak by. We're, we're turning it back to goodness. Okay? And with that, we'll be profitable. We'll be a great company. Yes, sir. How many? Do you have any extension? An extension? Yeah. Who needs an extension on that truck? You got one? Yeah. And yeah. How many of you taking the E and the H? You're going to need one more truck because it's going to need one more four. Can you take an extra four room? Uh, it's going to be L. Don't we'll take the L out of it. Well, we've got extra portables in here. Yeah, we've got all kinds of portables here. We just bought one. We, we, we just we've salvaged one. We just throw another one on the bank. Okay, then yep. who, who needs nozzles to the portables? Everybody's got nozzles. Okay, that's fine. How about foamers? Everybody got foamers? you got an extra four more in the car. You don't have a foam? Why, how come? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, then that will be two. So, what you've got to do when you came is get a list of this crap. And definitely get the level get one, three, two, one, one and ground. Okay. Okay. We if that. we have to do, when I come back here Sunday night, I'm hoping that those are all done and that if we have to do oops, Monday on that. If we can do it all, I don't know. You guys have worked your asses off. We got four people not here. We're fucked. No, you know, we're fucked. We, we got Tracy. This man can, can be Birdman, fly upside down backwards, right? And you and, right. you and Cecil will be a team, better not. One more question. Yeah, we can. No, no, we, we can. can. How many guns are all? You have your own truck. team. Stay away from him, right? <coughs> I need a gun. Right? You got two? It's a and, question. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you want to work with him as a teammate? Uh, of L? No. no. How many guns are so pick somebody up. <laughs> two. Okay, everybody got two guns. Go no. Hey, I need a gun. We gotta work together. I got a gun. Uh, thing you want that you can yeah. the other day. Okay, I got a thing. I can put it on there for you. Okay. If you're a man, before I go, I got it in the truck. I can put it on there for you and have it. So, could ever be a, a helpmate by phone if something? How could we use Everett there if something comes up? Mm -hmm. Emergency, air. I'm I'm in Chicago. Don't worry about that south field. That 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 one on the second floor with the with the fans on top, right? But yeah. that, Everett, I'm saying, if somebody gets injured, anything, they call you, you yeah. take care of them, you do the hospital, okay. you do what I will do. I got it. He'd be my designated guy in charge of the So, so who who? So who's going to be on site on Friday? The lead this time. And again, you're going to go do as many. You're yeah. you're paid the same as anybody else. Right. There's no distinction. There's no, no, there's no big one. shots here. One, two, three. What time is this over with? Well, yeah. Whenever you feel like it. You can come and go when you want to. No, I, I, I mean, I mean it's right. You want to carve out eight or ten hours and well, since pop it? Sunday, me and him's got to leave at three. We're going to walk. We're going to, we're going to, Jeff, we're going to probably. I would say we kill the Oriental like, walk. We're, we already talked about maybe kill the Oriental walk. We tell them that. That, that would be nice. I think you should get Bush Stadium more prior. Right. right. I tell them, them that Bush Stadium needs us that we have to put them off. So this is a training thing. Can I can I speak? Yeah. Bush Stadium.
if I think everyone knows only one, only one, one hood, the what, only red cloth. If you spray the fan, the water can come down. Okay, could you tell the person doing the red cloth back then? Because other people, they're not going to remember. Okay. At the and time you tell them that. One on the fourth level, parties, mm -hmm. and uh, what is it? Is that a, who, what are, those fans are on the roof. Those, those, yeah, yeah. those are on the roof outside. We got those there, but me and Paul got those there. Okay. All right. Everything up on that fourth floor, me and Paul can do. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. Sounds like so, would you want to do that Sunday? No. You're taking yeah. off Friday, yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Usually, do that on Sunday. Sunday so, so Sunday, you could hit the fourth floor. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, what happens? Tornado, earthquake, no, Ebola. You, you cannot do the the food and then do the pain. You got to do, you know, you that we know You got to do, you break it, do the pain, and then come in and do the hood. Okay. Right? Because you're going to mess it up. Joe, so who's doing the, who's making the, is Ruth going to be the one to take the list? Use the side. Do you want to do the one to make it up? Do you All you want to do, who's going to do it? No, as far as, just in charge of, okay, who's doing who's what? Who's doing what? Who's doing what? Who's doing what? No, we Sign need that done before people leave for that. That needs to be passed but around. You, you, don't, need you, to start you, you ain't going to know it until you get, you, you really ain't going to know it until you get down there. Do you want me yeah. to go on the website? I'll print out all the stuff well, right we now. You can decide. We, have, we a have a work order that has all this crap on it. Oh, you should okay. have. But, yeah. but, but who's going to be in charge of going to see the man and get the keys? Well, there's one. Uh, the uh, Bank America Club. Right. You can't get in there without the group. So I can do that Friday, but sorry. The what? The Bank of America Club? Well, yeah. will they not give us the key and keep it, or is that the thing that they, they the guy got upset and said he wants to check with yeah. the last time we used Then allow an hour or so that they didn't have the key that's what they told talk the guy through. It's going to be done during the week. I'm telling that the owner will be doing the walkthrough. Can I get to it, Chris? To about the key, getting the key? Yeah. <laughs> Leo has an idea about how we're going to get the key project. Right. If, if you think, if everyone you think you can go over there and just unlock all those doors, no, I mean, it's a lot of walking. Leo's still there. I'm not going to do it. A lot of walking. They will need one of the cars. No, no, no. <laughs> we're going to do this this way. We are young. We can get this done. Everybody can figure it out. Everybody can take potty breaks, whatever. Because you're not paid for potty. You're not paid for breaks. You're not paid. You're paid for what you produce. So it's your own incentive. You want to goof off in that? Fine. You won't get paid that much. You want to hustle, make a lot of money? Go for it. Show me what you can do. I'll say I can go down there early Friday. And I'll get a key. Talk to the guy. Which is the one, Donner, you can't get in without the show? Is there Bank of America? There's nothing. Right outside of. They said right outside of Marcos's office is uh, Carolyn, I think he said was her name. And you get a key from her. So could you today call them and tell them what we're doing and get the key and all that today? And make sure I don't do it yesterday. But about this idea? No. That, that, that we're not showing up like we normally do? This is a whole different approach. Okay. You, you need to let them know. I have full phone access till 7 o'clock tomorrow. You should be able to call me. I'm available. I will start the conference at 7 o'clock with Joe Dispenza. I will be unavailable till 9.30 tomorrow night. Other than that, I'm yours. If you need help or if you need to call somebody and say, Marcos, what's going on? Whatever, our guys are waiting. Because that's the problem. Which state is the problem? So you're going to do a check before Joe do a check? Just know that I am going to see and I'm going to record every single thing. I'm sorry, we're going to be showing this back I'm going to be doing the same thing you're trying to do. I'm trying to get some money just like Right. That. Nobody I'm is in charge of this but me. I'm trying to see what you're doing. You get your own to make sure they're doing what they got to do. Yeah. You're checking I'm your own work. He just said you're, you're checking your own, own work. work. And then Joe will check. And I don't want any confusion. Oh, I started this and then he came. <laughs> I don't want three people on this. And oh, he went, he left, he went his pants. <laughs> Oh, I need that crap. If you step up, if you do partial and leave, you didn't do any. Understood? But somebody gets hurt or something, then we'll figure it out. You slice your hand or something, we'll figure that out. Does everybody know that you need to bring the uh, plastic down and put it in the dumpster where this more yeah. for inside? Everybody knows that you can leave it up there. You keep it in there, garbage can. You got to bring it all the way down and put it in that dumpster that's more. Uh, 
recyclable or something. But also, this is a living organism. They have people that have new ideas. They just painted everything. You ask the guy, this is what we do. Is there something else you want? So you see this, oh, just leave it there, we'll take it. Okay, say who did it. But you know, whatever it said might have been true, this might be all new. The stadium is completely rebuilt. Do you know that all the cabinets have been re redone? They completely gutted that stadium. It is brand new. All new cabinets. Jim Zerillo, the guy that picked me up, he sold it to him. Those have all been redone. The stadium has been brought up back to brand new code. So we're going in a brand new building and destroying it the old way. So we're going to be very respectful and ask them, is there anything you want us to do different? Brian, this looks nice, blah, 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 blah. That's our deal, okay? Let's figure this out. You can use cell phones to discuss strategy. You don't have to just use them for company gossip. These also work, hey, I got a new idea about what things also work about strategy. Good? Okay. Now, where is Travis? I was told he was going to be here by now. Because we're about to start the other meeting. We've got to get him on this time zone. He's on some other time zone. Okay, what else is happening then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Let's do it. Uh, Monday, we have Peggy's Pizza. <laughs> then we start Edward, Edward Jones Dome, and we have Johnny's Pizzeria. At okay, how many are going to Edward Jones Dome on Monday? Monday, it is Paul, Edward, JB, Leos, me, and Cecil. Edward, is there any way some of this concept could go to Edward Jones? Or do we just want to pay to show up? There's there so many hours that well, we pay. Well, the, the problem with the Edward Jones going is that there's one crew going to be working on all the auxiliary kitchens, like the, the, the banquet kitchen and the commissary and the smoker and the, uh, the popcorn thing. Uh -huh. The rest of the crew are going to go up on the second floor and then the crew do that second floor and then they put a crew on the third floor. So. It's the How big thing. are the crews? How many two, two, two men. Two men. Perfect. So if those two, when you check them, but except for except for, for the my crew, which is going to be doing the big. But you'll be supervising them with your own eyes. Three, you're going to need three, at least three people. And if people dick off on you, what are you going to do? Is it going to be a secret? No. Not you not. don't want to snitch on them. God forbid we snitch. Right. snitch. That's, that's God right. forbid people do shit work and we snitch on them and then we pay them for shit work because that's what we do, right? No. We don't want to snitch if people do shit. No, we pay them no matter if it's good or bad. That's how good companies work. I just we don't want to snitch. Would appreciate it if someone's going to go off the job to smoke or to go to the bathroom or something. Let me know, because I don't hunt for you. I mean, I walk 10 miles trying to find some of the bitches out fighting outside the <laughs> All right, Everett, would you promise me, if you have done for anybody for more than 15 seconds, you will call me immediately. Is that a promise? Yeah, promise. I want everybody here. I won't overreact or anything, but I want to know. I want to know this week who is going to do this stuff and who. I want to know if you even can do it. If you know you're being watched by by the, if you can't do it, well, this is I don't know how to do it. Somebody's got to teach me. I don't know how to do this. I've been faking it so long. So how many are involved on Monday? Everybody's going to have a jump zone. Yeah, but we got, but maybe maybe two will pull for this other guy. I would say the walkthrough with me is going to be Tuesday. Hopefully we can get down if we're going on Monday. Right, but I might do some walkthrough with Edward Jones on too. I really want to know what's going on in this company in case you haven't figured out. I really want to know. I want to know. I'm really curious. Okay, what's we happening? Have, we have people going to Katie's Pizza. Yeah, me and Will are going to Katie's Pizza. One or two of you are going to come with me, possibly Tom. I want to teach him. Simon should be here next weekend. We're going to start teaching Simon this stuff. Because he doesn't know anybody. He's a nice guy. He loves everybody. He's got no axe to grind. If he goes and sees a bunch of crap, he doesn't know what's going on. He says, yo, it's a bunch of crap. He doesn't know that you hate dudes. He says, yo, it's a bunch of crap. Real simple, right? No, no drama. No, no, oh, I love you. You love me. You're my best friend. I'm your best friend. We're going to fight with them. None of that stuff. It's all gone, right? Simon's going to be here in a week. He's going to start being my eyes and ears on some of this stuff. And these things don't lie. These pictures don't lie. 
Only people lying are humans that are being deceitful and lying and stuff. That's what we're going to figure out. Because there's goodness here. What are we doing Wednesday? Uh, I need to say something on yeah. Monday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Monday, yeah. yeah. Say he's going to go to the yeah. For where? Every film on Monday. Yeah, he's shot now. You got three hours and fifteen minutes. I can spend down there, and then I gotta get home, get cleaned up, and get gotcha. back up. Okay, is that okay? You don't have to be. Okay. And people can get sick. You got diarrhea. You cut your toe off. You have a five minute. What? We're humans. We got six o'clock job, but we should be done by eight. Right, right. but things happen. When things happen, report it. Six don't eight. hide it. Don't pretend you're doing I'm stuff that you're not doing. So New idea? Yeah, he said he won't. Who else are we missing? That's it. Where's Brendan? I haven't talked to Brendan today. I'm not sure what you need. Who's the other Brendan? That's Paul Weeping. It's an old joke. <laughs> Brendan, you bring her back to Oh, now we start a rumor. Wait a second. Wait a second. It's all going down to sell it. Paul's wife from that trash. Are we agreed on the schedule? Yes, we are. Do we have Tracy on how many jobs? Oh, here we go. want to be on. How many jobs are we putting Tracy on? It's going to be after six. We understand. Any job after six, I'm there. What time is Travis getting here? We can ask him. Well, he was here a half hour ago. He's just in ghost form. Okay. Okay. Um, let's gather. We're going to start the official meeting, the 90 minute meeting, that may be short. If we can get through this, great. We are taping this because I want Mike and Kevin to see everything that's said. We hope we can reconcile, blah, blah, blah. We'll talk about everything that happened there. We want it on recording. Um, let me gather that chair. That's more of a teacher's chair. This one. Too. Come on in with it. I want to do the prayer of the Our Father with you. I did this with... Um, Kevin last Wednesday. Kevin and I, I think, had a very unique divine connection last Wednesday. And he came in, and I thought that was one of the most amazing things when he stood up and voluntarily made that apology to the group. And I think the chemistry that I saw between Cecil and Mike and stuff was just like a Disney movie. Any of you feel that? The specialness that went on in this room toward the end of last, last week? I mean, those last 30 minutes with Cortino and the love and all, did you guys feel that? Or was it just me? He was very supportive of the mind, and he was very forthcoming as far as, you know, what he was going through. Right. I thought, where's Cecil? He's gone again? Yeah. Huh? Okay. No, I, I was so impressed with that. Now, those of you that I already told the answer to, keep your mouth shut. What was the biggest miracle of last week? If I haven't told you. What was the, I thought the Kevin thing was great, but I thought one other thing topped it. I was just so dumbfounded. He was up there with Joe Dispenza saying, these guys all got up and gave a speech in front of you all. They did. They said, hmm, you may have a special group here. I think the divinity showed last week. What am I thinking of? What did you all participate in? All felt it together. Every single person here felt it. Okay, Tom, what was it? What went out to for 90 minutes? 90 minutes the food was delayed. And then when he got here, I felt there was so much respect for Cortino. One or two at a time came up quietly, no disruption, no talking. It was like a library. We were respecting that Cortino was sharing his heart with us, and we ate, and it was so calm. I thought that was great skill. I really do. And I love what Kevin did. Now, Saturday, Mr. Jeff, come up here. I told you, I forget. We went over, and Jeff was early, and so we went over. And when it came done, I gave him a hundred bucks, and he said, "No, no, no, no. What'd you say?" I said, "Oh, no, you go ahead and keep it. I'll do this 
do this just to help you out. Right. And we went back and forth a couple times. And finally I said to him, look, I'm going to turn this into insurance. You, the insurance will pay us. Your sweat and labor, this been a lot. How successful were we looking for his rosary? Yeah. We found everything but the rosary. That thing was, you weren't going to get that back. We right. We think that got consumed. But looking for your rosary, <clears throat> we found all that crap. Isn't it great? All that crap we found? It was some of it's just sentimental, but some of it, you see all that crap we found? Yeah. I mean, that's a major thing. Mm -hmm. And it would not have happened without Jeff. <laughs> You should see him on a drive when I get there. <laughs> he, he got a golf club out of it. Oh, you've had to. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. That was really nice. Nice. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Let's do the Our Father. Now understand, all four Gospels have Christ talking about go to your secret place. Go to your quiet place where no one sees you. So in the Gospels, Christ is saying to meditate. Stay calm. Two of the Gospels mention the Our Father, and they're, they're totally different prayers. The thing that we've learned is what I'm going to do for you and annotate it. It says Our Father. What the words are are Papa, Daddy. It is blasphemy to call God Daddy in, the, in, the, in that familiar tense. That was punishable by death. So Christ says, Daddy. Now he says, who art in heaven. He says, Daddy, not of this world, but up there. Then he says, hallowed be thy name. Why? To get away from the blasphemy. Daddy, Papa. Let's be very whole. So that first thing is just him, his way to get past the, the snitchers. The people that said, I heard Jesus. He said, Ben, we're we going to crucify him for blasphemy. Okay, I'm going to snitch on Jesus. That's all that was. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's one thing. Now, what do we ask? Thy kingdom come. What is the kingdom? In other words, who do you put ruler over you? Who's the king? Whoever you consent to. Thy will be done. God, I know what we're struggling with. We're trying to connect to that divinity. We're trying to connect. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So what he's doing, he's putting these two things. This otherness in here. We're trying to connect the two. And what does he say to ask for? Give us day, which is what? Life. What do you need for life, J.B.? Bread. Pardon? Bread. What do you need for life? Before bread. Because uh, he directly asks for that later. Bread. Uh, bread. bread. Give us this bread. Give us bread. You don't have air. The company doesn't have have cash. That's that's like air. Give us this day our daily bread. And then what? Oh, this is the hell part. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Uh oh, guilty. Then we got the part that we all pretend isn't there. Lead us not. Lead us not into temptation. But they never seen So what we what we are struggling with, every single person in here sins by how we communicate. We just do it. It's part of our nature. Now there's 168 hours in a week. There's a there's 720 in a month. There's 7,200 in. So let's say you do something really horrific and it takes 25 minutes out of your life. And it's horrible! And it's the only thing you've done in 10 years. But those 25 minutes, they drive you crazy. You choke someone to death. You buried the bones. Nobody knows. You stole something. You cheated. You did something horrible. You're ashamed. Blah, 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 blah. A year goes by, 10 years. And you look at the little book. Uh, would you get the little book in the prayer room there? Because these titles are there. It starts fear. In our basic communication, the essential thing of communication is I see it. This is my belief. This is how it is. For me, you process it your way. There is this little tap of divinity that Christ talks about. We all have that little tap of divinity. 
out of which the human starts to grow. And in those early years, we are incredibly selfish. But this little thing knows it's the center of the universe. In the Hindu thing, the people pray every morning to remember their divinity. But what we do is we come along and we create what we call the, this is the id. We create this ego. We create this superego, which is persona. Like right now, you're getting my superego. I'm pretending. I'm acting. This isn't me. Out of 72,000 hours that say I've spent in the past, you know, 100 months, say 800 of those, I've been suicidal. I want to kill myself. I've been so depressed. I don't want anybody to know. I'm just miserable. And three or four thousand of those hours, I'm sinning. I'm directly doing evil to others that I'm getting revenge. I'm lying to them. I'm cheating them. I'm stealing. I keep all that. I don't want anybody to know that. But that's part of who I am. That's the hidden part that I'm guilty. I'm shameful. Hey! Welcome! Don't buy you a watch. Glad you're here. <laughs> So what well, you've got to understand, the reason you communicate is to manipulate. We all do it. It's a given. Got it? This is tough stuff to know. We are divided into nine things here, how we communicate. You were raised certain ways, and you've made decisions by the time you're six, seven, eight, that one of these things is the kick-ass. You either want perfection, you want to serve, you want to be successful, you want to be unique, you want to have wisdom, you want to have faithful loyalty, you want to have fun and joy, you want justice, and you want peace. Now watch what you do in the darkness of your heart. That's what tells you where you are. And most of us have several of these. But there are patterns when you discover it. There is basic pathology built into us because of why. We are so afraid. This scares us. This is the human condition. We all do it. What you got to do is know yourself. What do you do normally in the secrets of the darkness? Is it anger? You pretend the people that are out of That's not their problem. The anger is the passive, aggressive, non-spoken behavior of manipulation. The serenity. All is well. Everything's fine. How are you? Hi, sweetheart. How are you? So what's really going on there is this raving <laughs> maniac that's hidden and outside. Hi. I love you, you love me, we're as happy as we be. Hi, boys and girls. What is really going on? So what we've got to do, you've got to come here for a couple hours a week and fake me out. You've got to go to customer sites and fake them out. And so you've got 30, 40 hours of faking people out. And you've got the rest of the week to just be a jerk. Be lonely. Be unloved. Be disconnected. This person here wants to serve others. They want to do good. I want to do good. I want to serve you, buddy. But what happens is you become a rescuer, victim, persecutor. What you excel is humility. Oh, let me be your servant. Let me wash your feet. Let me care. Inside is pride. I'm the best. Hey. Pretty good. How about me? Huh? That's what we're hiding. But that thing is inside us. We got all of these in us, but certain ones we really got good because our parents raised us that way, our teachers, the way we married. Somewhere we decided this would be heaven. Successful. The big thing is you can trust me. I am so truthful. I never tell a lie. Inside, right there's a lie. Of course we're lying. The whole thing's a lie. We're phony because we just 
We pretend. We got nobody to be real with. We're too afraid. We're too ashamed. The fourth is uniqueness. We want to be really special. Nobody ever come along with me. You've got emotional balance. Nothing puts me down. But what's hiding here? Envy. This company reeks of envy. You can smell envy a mile away. It comes through all kinds of stuff. It is the hidden demon. Hidden demon. When I became wealthy, I found dozens and dozens of people I hate on my face. They were envious. How does a jerk like me do what I did? Son of a bitch. That's good. We're not talking jealousy. Jealousy can kind of, oh, that's nice. Where can I get that tent? I want to get that hat. And in three weeks, I, I go buy the hat because I'm jealous of you. Now I'm equal with you. Because now we have, oh, your car. I'm jealous of your car. I want to get that car. Ooh, you got a neat. I don't, you're jealous. Jealousy's okay. But envy, oh, God, it's destructive. It's core values of hate. It's hate. It's horrible. Now here we got person wisdom, not attached. I'm aloof, I'm a judge, I'm impartial. I can take your point of view, I can take your point of view. I'm not invested on you. I'm wise. But what's really going on is avarice. What is avarice? It's it is greed run amok. I can't have enough. I can have more facts, more everything. Everything's mine. The little kid, give me everything. You take it. I got it all. This little kid, this little squirrel brat that's an only kid, they, they would be born with this. they got no brothers and sisters to share with. They're just greedy as can be. More, 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 more. Now here, faithful and loyal. If you want to look at the population, we come into our tribe somewhere around 40% this and about 30% this. 70% of the population that born into the United States has this amazing faithful loyalty and wanting to do good and service. Out comes pride and this crap. Out comes this fear. So you would say that snitching and communication and all that directly affects us because when I say, what happened? You go, blah, 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 because you're covering up for this guy. You're covering up for this This is my friend. I'm loyal. So what we've got is the communication that has destroyed this company to now is this. we got so many people that are faithful and loyal, and that's a great thing. And it's great courage. You can't beat it out of me that somebody didn't go to the job last night, I'm covering for them, and you're not going to tell. I'm very good. I'm very good. Yeah, all right. Fear. That first chapter in the book, Fear. Fear. We've got this little tiny connection. Fear. We communicate. What happens in a manipulation, remember, all of this is to manipulate. All this is to ways to trick each other and control. All this. So I come into this group and I say, God, I'm lonely. Can I, can I trust you with a secret? Yeah, sure. I find you a real asshole. You say, no, me too. Isn't he full of shit? Yeah, oh God. God, I feel so loved in this. Thank you. This will be our little secret. <laughs> now, it doesn't have to be me. It could be Brenda. It could be, it could be anybody that annoys us. Let's keep a little secret. What does that do to a team? It's called pairing. Instead of a team now, now we got a little secret going here. And what do I, the person doing it, what are they doing? They're putting claws and ropes around this person, and they're controlling, and they're strangling them. And the person thinks, oh, that's kind of <coughs> The fact, if I didn't have secrets with everybody, I must be pretty good. I'm in the spider web. i got secrets with everybody. I can't remember who i got secrets with. I'm little buddies to everybody. And then now test, now you got to prove, are you more my friend or his friend? Fracture. So... Tell them both stuff, hope to get caught. It's like cheating on your wife or having multiple partners and so forth. Oh, I'm faithful, I'm true. You get caught. Oh, they caught me. It's not healthy. 
it drives us deeper into hell. Deeper into hell. The seventh. This one wants happiness, fun, and joy. They're sober. They're balanced. Their problem is gluttony. Too much. This is, this is my thing here. I was raised here. I evolved here. By the time I got into my 20s with that, my dad was this. So I evolved to learn him. And so I evolved into these things. You, as you get older, you want to be good at all of these. You want to choose this, but know these are here. But with, if you just float gently down the stream, the people you marry, your friends, they're going to guide you with. You're going to start looking for this. So when you get in the midlife, you're going to be really heavy into certain one of these things. Long comes here, you want justice. Basically, you have innocence, but what's taking you is lust. You are just crazy. Power, sex, alcohol, anything. Now, the good part is, you want justice. You want there to be fairness in that. But when you want justice, like now, like in five minutes, justice in this country takes hours, weeks, months to happen. And it pisses you off. And so then you cut corners and you come storming in here. This last one was peace, action. And so what do we got here in this company? We've got a lot of envy. We've got a lot of lazy because it doesn't matter. If you go to a job, you go, oh, it doesn't matter. I'll give you two hours. No, no, it's better not. No. That's the end of a work week. We, we, we lost money. No, who cares? Nobody, nobody, nobody's watching. Nobody said anything. So you come here and you go, wow, this is kind of a weird place to work. They're losing their ass. People are stealing stuff left and right. The lead guys are lying to us. Boy, what a mess. Let's just. So we got the guy come along in January and says, all right, let's focus on yourself. Let's focus on you and your divine energy. Let's try to get this thing back here. Don't worry about anybody else, just you. Leave that up. We'll let this process happen. On June 25th, I came back having been basically gone from about August 16th, two years ago. Went through the whole thing with Sue, with the decapitation and that. Went through the heart thing, had the heart miracle, December 7th. Got that worked out. A year ago, I was 360 pounds, couldn't walk the thing, all that. I'm 107 pounds lighter this morning and so forth. I've done all kinds of amazing stuff. My heart doctor on Tuesday, 48 hours ago, looked at me and said, you heard pleasure now. I said, this is amazing. He said, when they make you a saint, I want a holy car. He says, you don't need more stuff. Your blood gases are great. Your heart rate. Everything's good about you, Joe. Just don't go out there and get hit by a bus. He said, you are good to go. You are good to go. So on June 25th, I took the thing. I listened to the staff. I made Cecil his deal. I made Tanner his deal. I said, OK, let's go out on the river. July 3rd, let's do, we did a little thing, and what is going on here? There is palpable anyone here. Talk to sisters. This is the only thing that like. And we went out, we did the thing. And when I got in the water and I did that whole deal, I said, we could do the whole prayer thing at the end. And I stayed there and I saw what was happening to me. I just saw the presence of evil. What is going on here? I couldn't figure it out. So we went, we had the thing with Grimey, and I said, honey, you are keeping this thing going. I am so proud of what you're doing. I couldn't figure it out. And it was a few days later, we should get the thing. I found out about Danny punching Tanner, Tanner coming here, and then you sticking up for him based on size, leave them alone, the, the Cardwell's thing. And then I started, I had some very frank talks to people, and I said, start telling me. And I took the staff people, I said, look, there is a whole lot of stuff, and almost everything says, well, of course you know this, because I told it wrong. Of course you know this, because Ken was there. Of course you know this, Tom knows. And then the topper was when J.D., did the thing, and I find out later it was Cecil they called. 
JB needed gas. He's afraid to call me to say that. And I go, he didn't say, I didn't call you. Cecil did. But I mean, it takes five or six questions, waterboards, just about, how are you today? What's happening? Did you go to, no, he went, and I didn't know. I said, we got some communication problems coming. We've got to be accurate, and we've got to be efficient. You shouldn't have to ask six times to get the right answer. What's the problem? Are people afraid of me? We'll fix it. And so what we've got here is this thing called snitching. And what are the new do dry snitch or what are the new? <laughs> what's going on? Wait a minute, can I say something else? Yes, sir. If I was having a company like that, that shouldn't even be in our vocabulary. Snitching, we try to run a business. If it got anything to do with our company, if jobs, anything, that should not even be on the schedule on the table. Right. So the thing is, we have an after-service call that needs to be honestly reported after the job. That's just part of the deal. We have after-service forms that can be honestly filled out. And for somebody to say, I did a mediocre job and so forth, there's no problem with that. From day one, it's been the cover-up. The cover-up is what's been forbidden. So then you've got people that come in here and they say this, and so the question is, where's Lagranos? He's trying to keep this whole thing going. He's this guy, but he's here. He is the nine. He is trying to bring peace to everything. Unlimited from him. You bring it to him, he's going to take care of it. Right? Because most of the time, nobody's been here but LeBron. I haven't been here. Ken hasn't been here. Tom isn't here. Who's always here? This dude. So he got in the middle of this circular firing squad with what I call the Crystal City Circus. The Crystal City Circus right now is inhabited by Mike Hampton and Kevin T and a bunch of kids and so forth. And I'm recording this, so I'm talking right to Mike, I'm talking right to Kevin, if they will watch it. I love these two guys. Yesterday, I asked Mike to come up here because I thought Kevin was doing a stakeout on Mike. I wanted to confront Kevin in real time to get it worked out so that Kevin could apologize to Mike. Unfortunately, I didn't know Mike had no sleep, all the thing, and Mike just exploded. Just exploded like I'd never seen him. I said, okay, this is fun. So I said, give me your keys. Ooh, we got the car set. Oh, well, you guys just go home. He said, are you fired or that? I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I said, I own this company. You work for me. Period. You work for me. That's how it is. If we're going to lose the company and that, we're going to lose the company. I don't care. But you've got to show me basic respect and courtesy. Because what I asked Mike to do was to write out what I've harmed him. Thinking there's a couple minor things and then I would apologize to him. Then we'd go to Kevin who did the big stuff. And Kevin, now, again, a week ago, Kevin cleaned the slate. He more than cleaned the slate with me. But, what do you do Friday? <laughs> Instead, I invested time with Ken. I put the time I could have, would have, should have done with Kevin. I invested with Ken. That's fine. We got the police report. That's fine. We had, you, some of you may not know this, but last week, this whole thing was framed on a $2,000 scam from my brother-in-law, who is a colonel in the Pentagon, who has White House clearance. Somebody was taking the fact that my son on the red lights and using it to scam him. As of right now, we don't know who did it or where. As of right now, they think it was somebody in Bristol, Virginia. It could still be a friend of somebody that works here, but we don't know. As of right now, we, we don't know anything. But while we were meeting here last week, this scam was going on. And I thought, interesting. The people would all have an alibi. And I'm just thinking like a detective. So we'll just see. Is it Hampton? Is it T? Is it one of you? Is it somebody else? Is it a friend of somebody? I don't know. I still don't know. My heart thinks it was a random act of evil, but we don't know. We don't know. And the guys that are monitoring this, they don't care. It's just too grand. It's a pity catch. What these guys do is they watch people for months and suddenly 600 people get arrested. That's what's going on. They're picking out these people that grab 2,000 here and there. 
They got a hold of my sister. My sister called my brother-in-law. He got a secure phone. 11 conversations, all traced. Everything known. Everything known. So whoever did this crap, as I got more and more into the story, it did not sound like anybody here. But that could be a trap, too, because I'm playing detective. They threw in this other stuff just to throw us off, because they knew the first time they made a mistake. So see, I'm trying. I'm open. We may catch somebody red-handed that somebody's a relative or a friend of somebody that works for us. But as of today, seven days into it, we don't know. And these guys, they don't care. I told them, I don't care. It's just two thousand bucks. Well, I care. Because I'd love to have somebody on a federal FBI list that they scammed two thousand bucks out of one of my relatives, thinking they were getting it. So while all that was going on last week, <clears throat> and I get another phone call from another person talking about two thousand bucks. It goes, whoop, whoop. 2,000 is the same as 2,000. They wanted 2,000. Interesting. So Kevin and I had some pretty good talks about all this. And he stayed congruent. He stayed with it. So now I invested the time Sunday with you to help get you into a really nice place. If we can pull that off, isn't that going to be great? It's really nice. It's going to be a major improvement. So Kevin moved the appointment from there with just him and me. And he shows up with three kids. Oh, Kevin, stop it! Stop the circus, Kevin! It's you and me, adult to adult. Let's figure this out, adult to adult. Quit the circus. But Sunday, everything seemed fine. I love you, you love me. We're as happy as we can be. Kids, kids are happy, everything is fine, everything's divine, we love everybody. So I go to bed Sunday thinking, oh well, I guess Kevin's engaged. We're going to pull this off. Because what am I asking Kevin to do? I had a home over here at CISOAC Monroe, which is called La Mancha. The inspired, up-to-date vision when I was an adult, not a 20-year-old, just thinking about something I could do with my life. It was a very specific thing. That La Mancha would be multiple foster care short term. When like one parent's in jail, bingo! The other one's in the hospital, bingo! We had a fourth level where we could take eight people at a time, kids and so forth. They'd be old enough to kind of take care of themselves. They don't even need us. The adults will be downstairs. And all that. There's nothing to go wrong in this model, right? You see? So two or three weeks ago, I honestly went to growing and I said, the two Hampton kids and the two T kids, I just, is there any way? We've got these two unused bedrooms. We just tried for a couple of weeks. They're, to, they're kind of a unit. I was doing that. I, it was a horrible thing to ask. But, and she said, of course not. I said, I know, it's horrible. But that started this whole thing. And I got the idea. Rufus, where do you live? Five minute walk from here. That's perfect. If you had a problem, and I said, you can come live with me, you can bring your kids with me, leave everybody else alone. What is that like? Every, every recovery house in America does that. You come here under strict rules. Does that make me a bad guy? Kevin's got nine kids. I'll take two. He's got four or five wives. I'll take zero. He's got a mom. I'll take zero. Now, someday, he brought two kids that live over here. And I said, well, you know, this might work. You can have some, some play and kids here. That can work. You, can, you would live here for a year under confinement. If you want to go see your other nine kids or your other girlfriends or mother, you can go there. Get here. But this is mine. When we call the police, it's mine. Who won't? Me. He's a guest of mine. Okay, get the hell out of here. So if any of these kids show up, if any of the circus members show up that's been in his life, if any of these they, they got to leave because it's mine. Does that make me evil or horrible? You, know? you can think so. But I think what I'm doing is trying to contain evil. I'm trying to get a guy who is crazy.
easy with all this crap. Just more, more, more. So, Sunday night, I got a thing where, well, at, well, Monday we had the whole mess. We have a neighbor of Mike's that's doing horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. And Mike had the divorce big thing on Tuesday. So Mike got just like he put a bazooka in fire of him up on Monday. Meanwhile, I'm getting a thing from Kevin that, oh, yeah, yeah, I got an interesting deal around Bayou and uh, I'd really like to uh, give a little thought to it. So at 7.30 Monday night, I wrote him a very detailed message of my concerns. And I said, you know, Saturday, whoop, slip slide away. Sun, well, Friday, whoop, Sunday, whoop, Sunday, did, uh, whoop. kind of getting the feel it's the old Kevin back. Because I need accountability from this man. Affordable, accountable. I need accountability. I want him sticking to me, and I want it manageable so that Tom and LeBron and Ken and Simon, they're going to just tell me everything they hear and see, and it's not snitching. It's their responsibility, because we're going to help Kevin get sober. He quit the circus. Quit all this crap. Your two kids are dying. Work on those two kids, and you live right here. And you know the 20, 30 hours that you watch him driving back and forth, driving junior, driving 50 cents a mile, 60 cents a mile. Who's paying for all that? Right here, right here. All that money's going to the toilet. He's already admitted to a very big sum of money that he stole. He, he, he did, I think, a full confession in writing. I will not use it against him unless he knows the way. If he attacks, I would defend but that will pay there, that he will figure a way to pay us back and we'll do it. But first, he's got to get his time under control. He's got to get the energy, the craziness. I just want to be with my children. I have my wonderful children. Let's go to the zoo, children. Let's meet up at Joe's house and we'll have a little picnic with Joe. And I'll get some of my wives and I'll have some of their friends. When we went down there for Birdman, did anybody witness that? Nobody was there, were they? But Ken and I. I felt the trailways bus pulled up and people got in. Who are all these people? It's a circus. Because as long as there's a circus, what happens? Nobody sees what's really happening. It's just total confusion. And of course, you don't want to snitch, do you? You can? You don't want to snitch. Oh, no. You don't want to snitch. You're honorable. You don't want to snitch. You You've made all these alliances that are my little secrets. So that's what I'm into. So when I talked to Kevin Tuesday night, I thought he was stabbing Mike in the back. Big, big, big time. So I asked Mike, I said, you got to get up here, spread across me. Mike thought he was horrible. He was tired. He had two horrible things. He got here angry and that. And so when I said to him, what have I done? He started writing and stopped. Okay, there could be some stuff I don't apologize when we were together. Well, he basically just hit me with a bazooka. With 18 days ago, I betrayed him all in all. Hmm. And you didn't tell me? Oh. I shouldn't have to tell you. I should know. Okay. Interesting. So he was just talking irrational. And then Fang said, well, look. And then Kevin basically was saying, you know, a couple years ago, we were doing stock ownership. I think you cheated me out of stock here. I earned stock in this place. And I said, well, you know the value of this place is going down. So if you actually own stock, you'd have to pay money into it. Right now, you've stolen so much. You haven't found a way to get that back. But he's really pissed that I've stolen stock from him that I promised him and Sue. And oh, Sue! Sue, the one that was going to steal the place, and you guys forgot to tell me. That's Sue. Okay, I get it. All right, meeting adjourned. Let's get the hell out of here. So that's how it was. Now, on my way to Matthias, got some wonderful connections. Got some wonderful connections from both. Connected. We've had several things. So they said, what are we going to do? I said, well, why don't you show up at 12.15 and we'll haul the police there and start shooting at you or what? 
So I don't know what's going to be. Because, I mean, you all have to have to get the flavor of this thing. The, my sense is the last couple weeks is uh, they just thought they ran the place. That, that with Monsanto, with Stadium and stuff, that even said so in the meeting. I just said, you got to be so full of it. You know how hard it, how easy it is for me to go and say, hey, look, I've got a conviction filed, the main guy you want is criminal, here's the deal, we're going to clean it up, here's the deal. They're going to say, oh, oh, you got a criminal and you're stopping? Well, then you get out of here. We don't want anything to do with you. You're coming clean. You're cleaning up the industry. Uh uh uh. We're so loyal to the criminal element, we don't want anything to do with you. That's how you think business is. No, it isn't. When you reach out to these guys and have the hard to hard talk, you say, God, I've already been proclaimed a saint last year, September 7th, Bill McCullough. I've got a bunch of people say, Joe, you hanging in there? What they do now is, God, Joe, you look great. Let's start off. Say, look at me. I'm back. I'm getting younger. I am truly getting younger. The stuff we're going to teach the spends is starting tomorrow on that. We're going to teach you. We are going to figure this out. Now, remember last week, Mike was amazing. You were amazing. The divinity that flowed in this room was amazing. Kevin was amazing. Tanner is a victim in this crap. Danny's an innocent little kid. He's loyal to Mike. I mean, that's the deal. We don't have four people crazy here. We've got one unnamed person that came and injected that person, male or female, to be determined, into this company and created havoc. It just created havoc. And because of that, like, your closer remark, I understand, was like a threat. That's you. But you meant it with love, you, right? The big blow-up last a week ago Monday, that whole big scene, the F-bomb scene, I don't know what you're talking about, Joe. Okay, he's got amnesia. <laughs> that, Cardwell's was the race riot, as far, or the war, between the Crystal City Circus and whatever we call this. That's where it got started. When you stuck up with Tanner, Tanner fled because he got punched by Danny. And I'm so confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to work out a place for him and you, and now, he, now he's back with them, and like, they got a lawyer, and now, you know, you two were fine. He had the thing in his eye, little thing, nothing. Now, you know, he's got this doctor bill going crazy. Like, oh, yeah, I got a little back pain. Oh, yeah, oh, JB, Paul, what did you do? How much crap did this guy put you through to fake injuries that really weren't there? They're recorded. I'm turning you in for a warning. We didn't say no damn injuries, that's for sure. But did he have you go to the chiropractor and do all that crap? Yeah, the more doctors, the more right. visits you get, the more money you get. That's what we're going to find out. Because Laos is going to go to an honest guy. He's going to go to the husband of a, of a teacher at Immaculata. We had that. His father is John Beck. When you're in a wreck, call John Beck. He's as crazy as this Ben guy. But hopefully he's honest crazy. I do think you and Tanner are deserving of something. I don't think you probably put all this nonsense on top of it to fake it. Then the lawyers collect all this money and say, hey, here's your little thing. We'll see if what you get honestly is worse than what he gets dishonestly. Because I don't think the system they do, we oh hey, oh I gotta drag this foot a little bit. I drag this little foot a Do we know anybody, Ken, that if you're given money to not work and that would act that way, that would be disabled? Is that the suspense of stuff? When you think you're ill and all, it makes it. And if they'll pay you ten, fifteen thousand a year, well, I can talk for you. I can walk for you. I can, I can do. When I was at Holy Cross, I had a whole parish full. I had women in their twenties and thirties on disability, perfectly fine women. This is 1999, 182. I had dozens of people faking disability because they couldn't get off it. The disability in this company has been free gas. That's what happened with Carlos, that's what happened with Danny. We gotta figure this out. Free gas keeps people from flying their wings and becoming entrepreneurs. We gotta figure this out. Everything you get that you think if you became a competent person, we gotta get it out of here. We gotta let you fly and make money. We're so stuck in this hellhole, 
We're just spinning on wheels. So what happened yesterday, to me, started to heal within an hour. Can they come back here? I don't know. I don't know. My heart says that throughout the night and the conversations with Mike, the good, healthy part of Mike is there. And he's in a lot of pain. He's in a lot of pain. Some of which he's going to have to take responsibility for. Long before he ever met me, he was doing crap that's caught up to him. He's in a terrible marriage, blah, 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 divorce, all this stuff. It's his problem. I can help him, but none of you was a twin with me. None of you has been with me your whole life. Most of you have been with me for, for what we could really measure in months. Even if it's three or four years. I mean, how long have you been in my heart? You yourself. Wrong, because I asked my heart. You have been a blob around here. You have been the last two years. By the time I was sucked in the river, you were just starting to become a person to me. And then it's like, what? You're so pleasant. The two of you. It was so graceful. I say we are pleasant people. I need pleasant people to be self-control and discipline. We'll teach you how to make, make the professional. We'll teach that to you. Who's been teaching? Nobody. You've been shammed. You've been taught crap. It's called King of the Mountain. Throw bricks on them. Mislead them. Misguide them so they'll never understand what the hell's going on. Let's keep this whole place so confused. We don't know what's going on. On June 25th, I came back and I started looking. And I started realizing, my God, LeBron doesn't tell me squat. He doesn't tell me nothing. Everybody said, well, I told LeBron. He said, well, I don't know. Of course you don't. No, no. So almost everybody in this company has opened up to me privately. And every single person who said, of course, Ken knows or Ken saw or Tom saw or that. People see but they don't understand. In my heart, I don't think there's any intentional malice or evil in these three. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But we will fix that in a week when we talk, whatever else is hidden. When I went to D.C., and I looked back, I thought what beauty we had established in starting to open up and be honest with each other and that. And I need that badly. And you need a system of communication that you can report things and know it will get to me. And that you can honestly tell me and that when we come to these meetings, like, I have done this like it's a football team. We play the games. Everyone know that you jumped off sides three times. And everyone, that's no secret. So they're picking you up and off. When we play the game, it feels like, oh, God, it took us so good. Everybody knows. In a real team, everybody knows. In, a, in baseball, every pitch, everything's documented. There's no secrets. There's no snitching. Because we're just honest. And so what we do is, we put it on the table, what can we do? And then, what did we fail to do? How can we get education and training for those people? If the people can't learn, then I have failed as an educator. But, if you've got the pathology of this stuff, and you can't take in what Cortino and your sister's giving you, I'm asking sister to come back in two weeks and she's going to start codependency. Does anybody know what that is? It's basically, we think we're Christian, we think we're nice, but we're sucking the life out of the person we're codependent with. We are manipulating and abusing another person without even understanding it. That is codependency. It's a very fine line. And I gave the example this morning. Where does center field end and where does right field end? When the, when the guy who assessed that this guy made the error that, he determined that that ball fell in the center field, he should have caught it and awarded the error for the center field. It's an honor. Who determines where the strike zone really is? Every umpire is different. All you want is, own, is consistency. Those first couple of innings, all right, that's our spot. Now we know. Where we, you, know you just want fairness. If he's, Change them. Oh, kill the kill the right. That's what we all want. We deserve that. You deserve that. So if 
LeBron being nice does something that undoes Ken, undoes Tom, to me. This is chaos. We're never going to get anywhere. We're just wandering in the desert. We're never going to get out of this mess. I'm asking each of you to keep an open mind about Kevin and Mike reconciling here. I don't know how we're going to do it. I think that Crystal City Circus is shut down. I will have nothing to do to help Kevin without it my way or something that we negotiate with Pat Oakland or somebody. If you think I'm a mean son of a bitch, go right ahead. I think Kevin, you have no idea. Let me tell you, he and I had a multiple hour talk four Saturdays ago. On the way home, I called him and I said, Kevin, I am so impressed with your trust. I really think there's a part of Kevin that so wants to get better. He's desperate. And then the demons pull him back down the hole. The next day, his daughter and I are here. We anointed, we prayed. Everything I'm doing now is based on what the daughter and he and I agreed to. That everything. That's, that's my belief. This offer for total control. Would any of you hate me if I said, all right, you can live with me, you bring two kids, but that's it. I don't want people coming in the house. Would you? Oh, Joe. Joe, you're so mean. You're dysfunctional. You're controlling. You're a son of a bitch. Who would think that of me? If I said, Kevin, his two kids come live with Ryan and I. That's it. If you want to have these, these other seven kids and these other women and all these, you go somewhere else. You go see them in a the park. You go see them. Don't come to my house. Does that seem unreasonable to you? Because uh, tell me about it. No, that's what you feel like opening your door. Yeah. But I want to help him. You can't help somebody. Can't if help we him. don't turn the circus off, I'm not helping him at all. You can't help somebody that don't want to help himself. And what I told him yesterday, I said, deal stop. I'm not doing it. I said, you come to me with a deal that I'll buy. And I'll consider it. But I'm telling you, that's the only deal I'm going to do. It's got to be something that controlling and that absolute. I can't be running all over circus with these other seven kids and all the grain. I mean, you, how many have we had come through here already? <coughs> I mean, you know, you know, it, it's you may well, but it's the extended family. I truly believe that last Wednesday, in the eight hours that that uh, each of us invested four hours together, I saw Kevin's divinity and he saw mine. I reveal things to him and stuff that I've never said to anybody, and that's because of the goodness to him that connected. We have very similar wounds. We have very similar backgrounds as childhood. Very similar. And we connected. And there's a part of him that so wants to get better. He so wants to do this. How do you get rid of an old mom? Would you just die on him and save him the trouble? He's got problems getting rid of the mom, problem keeping all the other kids away. Problems with the circus. And the, the music that's played is called the Circus of the Mark. It's Finding Neverland. If I, if I played this for you, just this opening thing, everything in my life, everything, has made sense to this, this uh, let me see if I can get it there. I'm only going to pay you two bars. But I listen to this every morning, and it is, it is my prayer. And I won't be able to find it. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. Um, who was in here the day that Tiffany and... Um, This thing is not good. That's a great idea. It says there's a moment in your life you've been waiting for. Where everything you've ever done aligns. That's how it starts. Everything I've ever done with my life aligns right here with getting Kevin and Mike healthy. Getting Rufus up and helping helping that crap car of yours get working. You know? <laughs> I mean, all of this makes sense. All of this stuff, this your goodness, 
And what happens is, it just, it just goes person to person to person. And you have to, me, 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 me. I can't do it. It might be your turn out, and then it will let you in. Eventually, if it's unfair, I'll figure it out. But everything I've ever done with my life makes sense with this. I think we can change the world with this. Nobody can believe that we can do it. And at the company dinner, we got up and did it. Last week, I mean, Grimey would be throwing chairs. 90 minutes away for food, where's her wine? She'd be saying f bombs. <laughs> I'm telling you, you all hung together. I was amazed. And the love that Cortino pulled into this, did not work? The six hours, the chairs were uncomfortable, the no, no, no. But you got through it. And I think most of us learned a lot of stuff. This is what I believe. I want to reconcile with Mike and Kevin, if at all possible. I don't know how. It looks impossible. It's not going to be the thing I'm going to do. It's going to be that when, when Kevin and I, there was a moment of connection, and there's some very private, personal stuff he said. The minute he said it, he wanted to hit that rewind button. Uh-oh. I let a big one out. Some snuck out, but he wasn't planning to reveal. Thank God. Thank God. Questions about what's going on here with Kevin and Mike? Ask anything you want. They're right there watching this too. Anything you got? I don't think anybody cares about what's going on. I think this is. I, I really didn't want to hear about what happened yesterday because it's really none of my business. But it is your business. No, I'm just here to do my job. I understand. Do my job but then you wouldn't gossip. You wouldn't gossip. <laughs> But wait a minute, the Pinocchio knows coming out. <laughs> what, what we've got to see is we do things in the spirit of love, but it still hurts others. And the thing is, we've got to connect. We've got to connect to this source. Then we've got to reach out in compassion with others. So as much as you can put yourself in Kevin's shoes and in Mike's shoes, and in Tiffany's shoes, and Lucas's shoes, and in Natalie's shoes. I mean, Natalie's come to company dinner, the float trip's the first thing she's missed. It's different. I understand. And that's on the record. Mike now has taken Christian as his wife, lover, whatever. So that's it. I'm just saying I do not want her at this company. She is not, she is not welcome here until she and I reconcile. I take offense there. And were you a fault or you bet your fault and your fault, your fault. It's everybody's fault but Christian. I get it. I get it. It's all our fault. But but Mike's gonna look at Mike when he gets healthy and say, okay, I'm responsible for this. What has to stop is the shortcutting and the pretending you're doing stuff that you're not. Not saying Mike has ever done it, not even once. I think there's a chance he did that. And I think that all the stuff that Kevin confessed to, except for the felony crime of taking the check, I think many, many people have done that because it's just how it's been. And if you give it to Legrand and he doesn't protest, well, what do you know? Legrand has been holding the fort. Legrand has been John Wayne mowing down everybody, trying to keep them away, just doing the best he can. He's not getting much help from Kevin, from Ken and I. He certainly, Tom says, what the hell I landed in this big, you know, oh my God, every day it's a circus. Where's this going next? But I'm not giving up. I'm not thinking this is an easy thing to do. I don't know. When I walked in this morning and got that report, I said, yes, that's cool. That was cool. Why don't you tell the people that stepped up like you said this morning? I, I told Joe this morning, the first thing I said to Joe this morning was that, um, that we really, the guys that are here, really stepped up last night. Yeah, Rufus, Andrew, Rufus and Darrell last night went on their own to oh, the okay. College Forest Park, which is way more than a two-man job, and did it on their own. Cecil last night was helping out with or had a job and then got up this morning and still went with Paul 
to uh, do a job at 6.30 this morning on short rest. And I just told Joe this morning that that everybody kind of stepped up. And that, and I also you know, mentioned it to Joe that I think that, I mean, regardless of whatever, the Crystal City thing, if they come back, they don't come back. I think Crystal we, City service, that's what I'm calling. I, I think, think that we have the guys here that can still do it. it we just got to... You know, we've got to have what we had last night. I know, but we've got Paul and JB being honest. They're making the copy. I need some time off. I'm dying here. Right. We got an aged nursing home. <laughs> 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 Double-A service walkers. <laughs> hey, I'm coming. I'm coming, Mr. Denny. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Lance <laughs> might be 30. There, a customer named them uh, over so here. Who? Over here at uh, Kirkwood Ice and Fuel. Name who? Kirkwood Ice and Fuel named Paul and JB. Slow and steady. <laughs> Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Were you here for any of the talks? Oh, yeah. You did it already. I already got it. Have you done this? Also, I forgot to tell you, Joe, uh, Greg's Bar and Grill called, seen our truck on the back of a tow truck. The Laos is burnt. Wow. Up. And said, "Want to you make sure to. everybody was okay." God so I'll to check to see if everybody was okay. Who knows out there? Okay, yeah, we have Paul Paul Fortino. Bonus plan. There are various points of this. Paul Fortino at first was saying that's codependency, dysfunctional. You shouldn't be paying people to go to school. They should just want to school. No. I said we'd do it, that's what we're going to do. It's up to you. It was promised to you, my promise is there, but I do want you to fill this out. Check off each thing you've got. Everybody doesn't have to say the chairs are uncomfortable or not. Doesn't. Just check off what you honestly think about those things. Put a check mark of anything that you think is truthful for you. If it's really truthful, circle that, but we want the feedback. Then, at the end of each session, he said, what, what did you get out of this? So at the end of the four-week course, write down what you got out of this. And then, if you've done, the deal was you had to do all four, and you would get the six. If you didn't do all four, now if you did all four, but you kind of fell asleep, got up and laugh, and you say, I don't really deserve it, whatever. You can do it. When you're done with that, I will give you your cash, and then we'll, we'll do the paychecks. Did I ask you to give me one? Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. Here, go on. <laughs> okay. Go get Next week, we'll be doing organization. Don't get him one. Organization is going to include how the things flow, you know, how there's still communication and all that. But we've got to get out this thing. And I asked Ken and Tom and Legrand. You guys, where are you? Did LeBron just leave? He's yeah. going next door to grab Archie. Okay. Because I really want them clear. They feel very funny about telling me stuff that they're afraid. You've told them in confidence. I'm saying, look, guys, we're losing the company. If we can't put all these puzzle pieces together. It took me three and a half weeks to get most of it put together. There's still about a dozen, 12 to 15 things that have some really weird question marks over it. Maybe in individual conferences, people will, will figure that out. But right now, we got the scope of what happened. We got the whole scope of what happened. It could have been a whole lot worse. Or maybe it is, and I just have those last pieces where say, oh my God, it's way worse than you thought. But there is not a conspiracy. There's not a me, Ronnie, against you, or any of that stuff. We, we want to be open and transparent to you as much as we can, as quick as we can. But you cannot have an investigation where every piece is at when everybody's suspect. It's crazy thinking that. Crazy. So if, if you have those kind of thoughts, we're not, we just don't exist as a company. My role here is to be the heart. These three guys are to be the brains. I will help them with the memory part. But, but basically, the heart pumps the money. The heart pumps the oxygen. The heart pumps the food. The heart pumps the blood. The heart pumps it so that kidneys can work and the, the waste can 
The heart is vital. The heart has to be there every second. Maybe it's not working. The brains, eh, every few hours is fine. Every 24 hours, you, you, you can kind of do it. People are reporting, and then there's a big crisis. The brain can direct what it needs to do. But that's what we're doing. I'm going to teach them between now and December how to really think and run this thing as much as we can, gently down the hill, row, row, row your boat. If Mike and Kevin can be that part of the new thing we're going to create, there's going to be some changes because we've developed bad habits. We've developed bad ways of communicating. We've had a lot of heart attacks. We've had a lot of strokes. We've got screaming and wet kitties and all this stuff going on. To create a circus. As long as we've got a circus, just, you don't have accountability. People all just run around. Oh, oh, here's the, oh, stop what you're doing. We've got to run. To, oh, I can't come to the meeting. We're just personally need the hinge kit. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I might get a flat tire. Hey, go check that out. You got to sign a date. What's today's date? The next and then put what you learned. What he needs to know is what did you, after the month together, what things did you get? You can't all say masturbation. But whatever touched you by what he said, put it down there. That's what you he wants to know. masturbation is? He wants to know. Masturbation. <laughs> it's masturbation. Did you attend after all the sessions? I'll tell you later. He'll demonstrate. Masturbation. <laughs> Tell him. Tracy doesn't know what masturbation is. So no, then you can't, you can't say it at all. Masturbation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was here already. He, 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 he wasn't here. here. I was here. If he attended all four <laughs> sessions, <laughs> and you, in the spirit of things, he signed that. I'll give you $60 right now. Say what? If you did not attend all four sessions, even like Paul, weren't you out of town? You, you don't get it. That was it. But give us the feedback for what you did. The intent is he will come once a month. We talked last night. He's got a, another series of three. He wants to try those. And based on what you did, because based on your thing, he will alter. We want this to be good for you, that you feel it's worthwhile. Because I'm divine! Okay, Cecil, you did the four? Yes, sir, yes, sir. And you participate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. You now are a college graduate. Yes, sir. Wasn't that easy? Yes, sir. Oh, 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 I didn't do it. Where's your shit? He just took it in the trash. Huh? Tom put it in the trash. I have no idea what he's talking about. He didn't learn. Ain't nobody else lawful? I did all the work. But I won't let the act. Did you go all four? Did you go all four?
never make the first page, the front page. No, I'm not. Cecil goes, you know, all the time. Anybody seen Laos at all four? He's claiming to be out here. Man, he was up there sleeping. I did want to see him. Thank you. Thank you. The real birthday is going Ken Slider. Oh, yeah, my birthday next Thursday. Oh, yeah, happy birthday, old man. So you going oh, going oh right. Did he restart? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll just smash. When you go, JB? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. When? When? I'm going to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Where's JB? Now, I'm going to go camping. You bought the same book? Yeah. I have still not heard from him. You have it? All right. She's got a voice in my box and says to take masks. I texted her, call me on the social security number. She has to do a soft one. She won't be there to give it to her. Where'd you be going? Hey, look. Oh, yeah, I want to do something all Okay, then I do it tonight. Thank you, John. Thank you. Oh, Marshall, you want me to up there? Thank you, Jeff. Why are you going to look? Here. Oh, that's one. Yes, sir. 